Good morning, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I want to extend a special welcome to Premier Fury. Yvette Coffey, President of the Registered Nurses Union, our new board members, MHAs, uh, and everyone gathered here today for this announcement. Before I begin, I want to remind you that you need to wear your mask when you're seated. Uh, and uh, without further ado, I'll call upon Premier Fury to make a few comments. We're still doing that. Well, thank you, uh, thank you, Minister, and, and good morning, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here uh, in person, <laughs> finally. Uh, it's been a lot of ups and downs of in person and then virtual, and I'm sure, like many of you, I'm really sick and tired of looking at a green dot uh, and trying to communicate through a screen. So it, it is truly a, a pleasure to be here in person and extend uh, warm uh, wishes to my colleagues who are here joining us today, including, of course, one of your own in Minister Howell. Uh, before we start, let me say simply to all of you, thank you. Thank you for being the heroes of the pandemic. I know you've heard it before, but on behalf of the entire province, thank you for your efforts. And I remember in the early days, which seems like a, a long time ago right now, and how nurses and allied health professionals continued to go to work in the face of the unknown, in the face of uncertainty, infectivity, at risk potentially to yourselves and to your family members. You all ran into the building, to the hospitals and to the healthcare facilities when people were frankly afraid to go into these facilities that are built to protect all of us. And for that, the province owes you a debt of gratitude. But even heroes get tired. And I know how hard you have worked I know how exhausted you all are, and I also know how the system has at times failed you. I've worked alongside nurses having to cancel their own wedding plans, find last minute childcare, and have seen them break down into tears as the OR continued to move on. We know the system needs fixing, but I'm here today to tell you that we hear you, we value you, and we know that the system may be broken, but the people in it are not. I've had the incredible opportunity to work with some of you in this very room, in ICUs, on the floors, in the OR, in the ER, and in clinics, in St. John's, Cornerbrook, Lab City, and frankly, in some other adventures around the world. I know the weight of the job can be overwhelming, and that sometimes you want to throw your hands up and quit. But never forget the difference you make in the individual lives of Canadians. Now, I know Minister Howell and I have shared many stories about what drew us to the practice of this profession, whether it's nursing or medicine or allied health professionals. And I'm sure like many of you in the audience today, it was a desire to help people. And I'm sure that many of you can recall today an individual experience where you helped a patient that has stayed with you throughout the rest of your careers. And more than that, has spilled into your personal lives. And it is that spirit of caring for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians that I believe, despite the broken system, is alive and well. Regardless of the country or irrespective of the system in which you practice, I'm sure that that spirit drew many of you to this profession. And that is what we need to protect, nurture, and grow. We need to see what's wrong and, frankly, harness what is right. Fix the system to protect all of you and to protect that essential spirit of health care. I've said time and time again in my previous life and travels in speaking about broken earth that I am a needy surgeon. I can't, the, 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 here, here, exactly. And the secret sauce of the team in the OR, whether it's here or in Haiti or Bangladesh or Ethiopia, has always been the nurses. Because you can do a lot without me, but I can't do anything without you. And that, that's true of my previous life and is true today. Yvette, Minister Haggy, Minister Howell and I have worked 
and had many conversations, and I thank you for that, Yvette, for the open honesty and the leadership that you bring to the table about how to improve working conditions for our nurses. Our health and our access to quality care are vital for all Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, and our government values the incredible hard work of everyone within our health care system, especially our nurses. While you rise to the occasion each and every day, the care and compassion that you have shown throughout the pandemic has been nothing short of exceptional. Nurses play a critical role in our provincial health care system, delivering services in diverse rural and urban settings, working in leadership roles, research, education, public health, quality, and patient safety. You name it, you guys are on the job. You as nurses care for others, and you need a work environment that is conducive to your own health, to your own well-being. You care for others, but we as a province need also to care for each and every one of you. We understand there is a critical shortage of nurses. It's affecting not only how you experience your own work, but how you feel about your profession, and that is troubling. You are resilient, but you deserve to know your work lives will get better. The recruitment and retention of nurses is unfortunately a challenge everywhere, and the pandemic seems to have compounded it in our province as it has in every single other jurisdiction. But my friends, that's no excuse. Our government started working on this important issue right away, as soon as I took over, convening the Health Accord NL back in the fall of 2020. Health Accord NL was created to look at our health system, care models, and to reimagine our system to best deliver services with transformations for a better workplace over the next decade. And we saw it listened, and incorporated essential voices of our nurses into this plan. Newfoundland and Labrador continues to spend the most per capita on health care, yet has the worst outcomes. We live in a health care system designed for a population of the 1970s and 1980s. As romantic as that is, it just doesn't work. Demographics have changed. Education has changed. Technology has changed. Your very profession and skill set has changed and we need the system to change too. Now that we have the final accord with its recommendations, we are taking the necessary time to analyze them. We know there are challenges that need to be addressed, however, in short order. So today, I'm delighted to join the Minister of Health and Community Services, Minister Hagee, Minister of Municipal and Provincial Affairs, Krista Lynn Howell, who I have to tell you is an incredible voice, and the President of the Nurses Union, your own Yvette Coffey, to announce a number of measures to help improve both the workplace environment and the recruitment and retention of nurses in our province. I do need to, once again, though, take a moment, because I've stressed it already, but to tell you how incredible a voice Krista Lynn brings to the table for all of you. She's just left the front lines, understands the needs, understands the stresses, and she's a tireless advocate on your behalf. So thank you, Minister. On April 4th and 5th, this is exciting stuff. We will, there will be a virtual think tank event to explore issues and challenges, listen to the lived experience of nurses, identify opportunities, and help us chart collectively a path forward. The goal of this event is to strategize innovative short-term measures to improve the workplace and retention and recruitment of registered nurses and nurse practitioners in Newfoundland and Labrador, with over 100 people participating. It will be an opportunity for all of us to help gather and share information, to inform a report that will be used as the basis for recommendations to, present it, to be presented to the Recruitment and Retention Office for Healthcare Professionals, with which Minister Hagee announced last fall. We have also issued a request for proposals for Registered Nurse Workforce Research Initiative, aimed at understanding the true shift in the nursing workforce including an inability to fill permanent positions, both full and part-time. We've all felt it. There is a shift happening in the workforce. To ignore it is wrong, but to research it and to understand it so that we can grow with it is the right and prudent thing to do. The trends of changing workforce demands and changing demographic demands cannot be ignored. Some of our inherent issues are based in the continued application of old frameworks, we need to accept this paradigm shift of our workforce and figure out new models for a new age. 
Another RFP has been issued for the development of a human resource plan for the province, a human health resource plan for the province. As our population ages and our demographics change, we want to ensure that we are providing the right care for residents in the right place at the right time by the most appropriate provider. The RFP was developed with the help of the Workforce Readiness Group of Health, Health Accord NL, and key stakeholders were engaged to provide input. Now, that's not just it. We have a third RFP, also being issued for a nursing corps staffing review, something that I've heard loud and clear from Yvette over and over again, spanning the continuum of care in select sites across our province. The purpose, of course, as you would know, of this review is to analyze current core staffing methods and provide recommendations and actions for improvement. The analysis will continue, will, sorry, will outline the impact of current, sta current staffing levels and models on patient care and patient outcomes. Now, we also know that there's an acute need among us right now, just like in every other province. So in, a, in an effort to help address the high number of registered nurse vacancies across the province quickly and make your lives better, we have also allocated $420,000 to create an internationally educated nurse bursary program. This will support up to 42 new nurse nurses to complete a bridging program offered by the Center for Nursing Studies. The program, which is followed by a four-month on-site clinical, generally takes about a year or so to complete. It allows internationally educated nurses to close any gaps that may, that may have been identified in their national assessment which evaluates, of course, as you all know, their credentials. This is an example of the kind of work Minister Byrne, who's here with us today, and his Department of Immigration are focusing on. This is the creative solutions that we need to help protect you, to help make your lives better at work and at home. It will translate into more registered nurses here on the ground in Newfoundland and Labrador who can help ease the current strain on the system. Now, back in October, our government committed to a suite of measures to add more health care professionals like nurses, LPNs, paramedics, and advanced care paramedics to the system. These included recruitment incentives and a new provincial health recruitment and retention office. And I'm happy to share with you today that a new assistant deputy minister for this office is currently being hired, and the establishment of the office within the Department of Health and Community Services will follow in short order. We recognize the challenges registered nurses are facing in Newfoundland and Labrador. And as I've said already, trust me, I've seen it firsthand. We want to start changing the course on this issue immediately, and we will. We want to show you that your hard work and resilience are recognized, appreciated, and that your concerns are not falling on, de falling on deaf ears. They're being heard. Better that, they're being actioned. We are making changes with many thanks to you and again to the solid leadership and collaboration with your president. She has tirelessly let us know your concerns. So thank you. Know that we will continue working on improvements for you, nurses, frankly, for all healthcare professionals in our province as we chart a new course, for every Newfoundlander and Labradorian who uses this system. But for you, we see you. We see the challenges you face. We also see the optimism for a bright future, for steps that are coming together to create real change and the unmatched, recognize, sorry, the unmatched value of living and working and caring for people in Newfoundland and Labrador. That's part of why we can be so confident that professionals we choose, or that professionals will choose this beautiful province to call home for themselves and they'll be working alongside each and every one of you. The ones who have worked, who have walked, sorry, into the building, who have faced the fears and persevered. Our commitment doesn't end here today with this announcement, however. Collaboratively, we will continue to develop strategies to help make working conditions the best they can be to both keep health care workers right here in Newfoundland and Labrador and attract new ones. Today, my friends, marks a step in the right direction for each and every one of you, our nurses, our allied health professionals, our patients, and our province, as we work to achieve this important goal. So when you feel tired, and when you want to scream, because I know that happens, 
And trust me, my wife worked in the Emerge last night and I got an earful when I came home. Know this, we care. And we are trying as quickly as we can in partnership with your leadership to make the changes required to make your lives better and the system a better place to work. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Premier. At the moment now, I'd like to call on uh, President Ms. Coffey to uh, provide some comments on these uh, important initiatives, Yvette. Thank you. It's all right for the men. They don't have to have their lipstick on under a mask. <laughs> Thank you, Minister and Premier. The Registered Nurses Union of Newfoundland and Labrador represents 5,300 registered nurses and nurse practitioners. We are their provincial voice. RNs and MPs work in communities in every nook and cranny of Newfoundland and Labrador. They provide competent and holistic care for the full range of patient conditions. Registered nurses and nurse practitioners promote health, and help prevent complications. They make critical decisions and provide vital care that has a direct and immediate effect on a patient's health and life. Our members care deeply about their patients, clients, and residents. However, their ability to provide patient care is challenged. And this weighs heavily on their own physical and mental well-being long after they leave the workplace. We have reached a pivotal time in nursing in our province and across the country. Well before COVID-19, registered nurses and nurse practitioners were under extreme stress due to workload expectations and staffing shortages. The pandemic has not only increased that workload, it has led registered nurses and nurse practitioners to report worsening mental health and high rates of burnout. Registered nurses face alarming rates of violence in their workplaces. They work high levels of overtime, struggle to get time off, and miss important life events with family and friends. They are tired, angry, and frustrated. Across the country and around the world, some nurses are making the heart-wrenching decision to leave nursing altogether or to retire early due to the conditions they face. There are more than 600 vacant registered nurse positions in Newfoundland and Labrador right now. Fewer registered nurses working in the health system impacts patient care. We recognize the provincial government's commitment and interest in working together to address the challenges facing our profession. As the Premier alluded to, we have met on several occasions and had some very frank discussions with myself, Premier Hagee, and Premier Fury. We continue to meet with officials within the departments, several departments of government, and with the RHAs on a weekly basis. We are standing here today with the provincial government because collaboration is what's needed to turn the tide for nursing in Newfoundland and Labrador. We have to get to a better place. We have to create healthier workplaces and working conditions. Make sure that registered nurses and nurse practitioners can get time off. Make it appealing to our students and new graduates to take a full-time or permanent position. To provide better support for our students and new grads entering the profession. And to bring balance and wellness into their lives. 
Several of the projects announced here today have been under discussion for some time. Inarguably, the pandemic has caused delays in completing this work. And while those measures, all of these measures, won't fix all the problems facing nursing or provide immediate change, they are positive steps. We are optimistic that they will help put us on the right path forward. Several of these projects, they will help us inform longer term strategies for recruitment and retention. This includes the Health Human Resource Plan, which will improve forecasting of health staffing needs, not just for registered nurses and nurse practitioners, but for all healthcare providers. The plan will support collecting and sharing better data so that future needs can be predicted and evidence-based strategies can be developed to address retention and recruitment and meet the healthcare challenges facing our communities. Health Accord NL identified workforce planning as a priority. The report includes calls to action to help ensure the appropriate number, distribution, and mix of health providers in order to meet the needs of patients and families in an integrated and rebalanced healthcare system. Their recommendations must be followed. A request for proposals to conduct workforce research was announced today. This work will also help inform longer term planning for nursing. The workforce is changing. Newfoundland and Labrador has the highest rate of casual employment for registered nurses among all the provinces. New grads see the challenges facing their chosen career and are reluctant to take permanent jobs. Many permanent registered nurses have considered taking a casual position to give them the work-life balance they desperately need. And we've had several resign. The workforce research will examine barriers to accepting permanent employment, approaches to improve work-life balance, and career preferences and expectations. It will identify best practices to address the issues the workforce and workplaces are facing. The core staffing review will also provide critical data to optimizing staffing levels and ensure it matches the changing needs of our population. This past fall, seats were also added to the schools of nursing. And we are encouraged a marketing recruitment campaign for health professionals is underway. For the first time ever, our province will have a government office dedicated to the recruitment and retention of healthcare professionals. We look forward to working with officials from this office to continue efforts to create healthier workplaces, address violence in healthcare, and stabilize the health workforce. To our members listening here today, I know it's frustrating to hear about projects and plans. You need help now. This morning is about acknowledging the working conditions and acknowledging that change is needed. While long-term planning is important, relief and hope are needed today. Every province across Canada is looking at innovative, out-of-the-box ideas to retain nurses and improve working conditions. We must do the same. On April 4th and 5th, a nursing think tank will bring together over 100 stakeholders, including registered nurses, nurse practitioners, the RNU Board of Directors, as well as managers and senior officials from the regional health authorities and various departments of the government of Newfoundland and Labrador. We will discuss the challenges facing registered nurses and nurse practitioners, but more importantly, strategize short-term measures to improve the workplace. 
We will ask RNs and MPs to complete a survey ahead of this event and share their perspectives on the solutions and changes that need to happen. Coming out of this think tank, a report and recommendations will be developed. Our members often tell us they do not feel heard, that no one is listening. Today, there's an important recognition that serious action is needed to improve working conditions. This is a positive step, and we need to build on it. RNU will continue to work with the provincial government and the regional health authorities on solutions. I have been a registered nurse for 32 years. I know I don't look like it, but you know. <laughs> I'm proud to be a registered nurse, and I am proud of our profession. The last couple of years have been extremely hard for everyone in healthcare, everyone. It's difficult to express how registered nurses, nurse practitioners, and all healthcare professionals have been working to provide care as well as respond to the pandemic. This is also true for those working behind the scenes at all levels in the regional health authorities and with the provincial government. I recently listened to an interview of three nursing students from our province. Their optimism and hope for the future was inspiring. They were passionate and ready to make a difference in people's lives. That same passion, as well as the support for each other, keeps registered nurses going every day. We will keep standing together for our profession and the patients who need us. And we will build a brighter future for nursing in Newfoundland and Labrador. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Yvette. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to be here for the announcement of these initiatives. Uh, each of them designed to help create a better environment for nurses of all stripes uh, across every area of the province. And really it's crucial that we do continue to work together uh, so that we can identify these problems that face the profession and focus on some solutions. As the Premier indicated, uh, we've recognized significant recruitment and retention challenges which face not only nurses and uh, nurse practitioners, but the healthcare sector in general. And while some of the initiatives we've announced today won't solve these problems overnight, I think today is very much a signal of positive things uh, coming down the road to address some of the more immediate concerns, uh, we, we have the think tank, uh, which will uh, roll around on, on April the 4th. Um, these measures, however, particularly around recruitment and retention, will actually benefit uh, all sectors of nursing, be they LPNs, PCAs, uh, and members of, of the RNU, uh, as well as um, uh, healthcare providers of every stripe. We're short of janitors, uh, janitorial staff, uh, and it's been a real challenge. Um, the pandemic certainly has delayed some of these initiatives. Those of you who served on the RNU board for some time will be aware, for example, the core staffing review uh, in Ms. Forward's time uh, as uh, president. Um, and, you know, just like 85% of your time is dealing with COVID, 85% of the department's time has been outbreak management too. Uh, and it's been a challenge all around. Uh, but again, uh, the ability of each and every one of you and the willingness to step up uh, has been very much appreciated. I think this is an important day for nurses in the province. Uh, these workload and staffing challenges that you face uh, are not unique to this province, but we need to craft made in Newfoundland and Labrador solutions. Uh, we've had an excellent working relationship with Ms. Forward and with Yvette, and we look forward in the department to continue that. Um, the focus, again, has to be on 
short term, and the think tank, again, is the way to deal with some of that long and medium term. Uh, and the other initiatives will take time to come to fruition. But there's a significant investment there in finding out what the real nature of the problems is, what the shifts are, and what the potential solutions might be. So uh, to draw this to a close, I'd like to end, as the Premier began, with a simple but very heartfelt thank you to every one of you. Um, with that, um, uh, we'll pause and we can invite questions from the media. Uh, I'm not quite sure how you would like to do that, Megan, but I uh, bow to your uh, instructions, as always. Thank you.